Hello everybody, I'm Ivan. Some of you asked me to uh, give more details about my enclosure and how it was built. On the other hand, I am just starting a project to improve it. Uh, now it's partially disassembled and it's the perfect time to present it. In this video, I will show the first step of my project to build a smart enclosure. And this first step is to implement uh, temperature control for the chamber and also to shut down the printer when the print is down. So the complete project uh, that I will do over time will include also uh, nail pixel lighting, uh, local physical controls with buttons for uh, changing the filament for example etc. All this will be managed by Octopi and uh, its enclosure plugin. Now about the structure. I built this enclosure a few years back for my first printer, Creality CR10. I wanted it to be temperature resistant, solid, 100% transparent and also to suppress the noise because at that time there were no uh, silent step sticks uh, yet. So I choose polycarbonate uh, sheet for the sides. It is 10 mm thick polycarbonate, quite heavy. The great thing about it is uh, that it is workable. You can cut it or drill it just, uh, just like wood. It's also stable up to 130 degrees without any thermal uh, deformation. So the ideal material. I subcontracted the cutting to uh, the cutting of the sides to a local workshop, and I requested the edges to be cut at uh, 45 degrees. This gives uh, more contact uh, surface and solidity to, to joints. Then I use some standard furniture components uh, to assemble the sides, and I built a, a metal frame only for the front door. As you see, I installed also a heater, it's uh, 500 watts. Um, it is a spare part for a bathroom convector heater and it costed around 20 bucks. So I've tested uh, the enclosure up to 80 degrees Celsius and I believe it, it can reach even more. I use the heater when I print ADS and polycarbonate. I get uh, uh, great results, uh, great ABS prints at uh, 40, 45 degrees Celsius and for polycarbonate I, I go up to 55 degrees Celsius. So let's start building the smart enclosure. I will position all needed equipment on the left side and I will mount it on a DIN rail. Basically, to start and stop the printer and control the enclosure temperature, you need some kind of controller. In my case, it will be a Raspberry Pi with OctoPi and uh, the enclosure plugin. Then a sensor to measure the enclosure temperature. For me, it will be a cheap DS18B20 prop. Then switching devices. Uh, to switch the heater and the printer on and off. Here I will use intermediary relays, solid state 2 amps relays, controlled directly by the pins of the Raspberry to switch on and off more powerful contactors that in their turn will switch the main walls, the printer and the heater. I also protect locally the equipment with a circuit breaker. When it has more rating than the one protecting your sockets, it will trigger first in case of short circuit in your enclosure system or printer. This selective protection will keep your sockets operational by cutting down only the printer. The indicator light is optional equipment showing visually that power is on. Optionally and for a later stage on my project I will have also a 12 volts power supply for Neo pixel lighting and other auxiliaries. For now, I will unmount the PCU because this one is quite heavy and I will look for a lighter alternative from Minwell. 
Here you see the wiring of the components. The left socket is for powering the Raspberry Pi. The right socket is controlled by a contactor and I will plug there the control box of the printer. Now it's time for my disclaimer. Implementing such system requires you to work with the mains voltage. Do it at your own risk. I cannot be held responsible for any equipment damage or electric shock injuries. Regarding the safety, decent electric products are normally protected against finger touch to leaf parts. Their terminals are going deep enough so they can't be accidentally touched. However, I will also print a protection cover once my project is completely finished. This is the enclosure from the inside. I connected the metal part of the heater to the earthing wire of the connecting cable, so it is safe to touch in case the heating element inside gets damaged. Few words for the temperature sensor. It is a BS18B20, extremely cheap, reliable and working well with Raspberry Pi. It needs a 4.7 kW pull-up resistor between the ground and the data pin. Then you connect it to the ground, the 3.3 volts and pin 4 of the Raspberry. Check the description for more information. About the power switching elements, there are also different options. You may use stock solid state relays for 10 or 25 amps, like uh, these ones, or similar cheaper Chinese products, if you want silent contactless operation. You may also use this type of modular contactors that are more compact. Whatever your power switching device, you will need to have this kind of intermediary uh, small relays to amplify the switching capacity of a Raspberry Pi pins. I saw some people using a uh, power solid state relay uh, connected directly to the Raspberry Pi because it is controlled with uh, 3 to 32 volts and they report it's working. For me, it's not a reliable solution because these relays draw too much current for the RTI pins. So myself, I will use um, the small intermediate relays with uh, this type of industrial contactors. It is a reliable solution and taking into account how oversized it is for uh, this application, it will last for hundreds of thousands of operating cycles. Please read the description for other possible options. Next step is to configure Octopi. Go to Settings, Plugin Manager, get more and search for the enclosure plugin. I have it already installed so it won't appear here. Install the plugin. You will need then to restart Octopi. Normally it should be in the list of your installed plugins. Now go to the plugin settings in the plugin chapter. This in the bottom of the screen. Here you can define your inputs and outputs. In my case, I have one input, the temperature sensor. You see my settings. I gave a name to the input enclosure temperature. I defined the input as temperature sensor. 
and specify the type of sensor. Sensor data is collected on pin 4. Next, let's go to the outputs. I defined an output for the heater contactor as temperature type. Gave it a name, enclosure heater, and it will be controlled by pin 22. Then I activated auto shutdown after the print is finished with off time delay of 300 seconds or 5 minutes so the last layers of the print can cool down in a controlled environment. Here you can define also a dead band. This is a minimum threshold that will reactivate the heater. I set it to 3 degrees. Let's say you set the enclosure temperature to 40 degrees Celsius. Once it's reached, the heater turns off and will turn again on after the temperature goes down to 36.9 degrees Celsius. Setting smaller dead band or zero will give you more steady temperature inside the enclosure, but frequent toggles of the heater will shorten its life. The last output I defined for now is the one controlling the printer. It is a regular output I call 3D printer start stop. Of course you can give it more bombastic name if you want, but it gets late and I am tired. Here again I set auto shutdown after the print is finished with time delay of 5 minutes to let the nozzle cool down. That's it. You will find all the controls in the enclosure plugin tab. Let's test it. Well, first I have to put the printer inside and reassemble the enclosure. So let's see now the controls. The printer is disconnected and here you see live the control box and the status of the contactors. So all the controls for the enclosures are here in the enclosure plugin tabs. So you see the temperature inside the enclosure 24.3 degrees. The output we call 3D printer start stop so here we can turn on and off the printer, uh, the output for the enclosure heater, both outputs are configured to auto shut down after the print is finished, so in order to set the enclosure temperature for example at uh, 40 degrees we have just to confirm here and the contactor for the heater is switched on. Then we can turn on the printer as well. It's uh, now turned on so we can connect. I'm testing the enclosure controls with 10 hours ABS print. The surrounding temperature was set to 40 degrees plus minus uh, 3 degrees and it was maintained steady during the print. Outside the enclosure is just a little warmer than the other objects in the room. The heater contactor switches on and off every 15 to 20 minutes um, to keep the temperature within the range. And the print is going very well. No layer separations or any artifacts due to the ABS shrinking. Here is the end of this video. I want to thank the developer of the enclosure plugin, Vitor Enrique for making such easy to use addition to Octopi and I'm looking forward to test the other features it offers. 
If I forgot to mention or to explain something, it will be in the video description. Please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Unless you want to see how I painted the baby Yoda with nail polish.